and welcome back to Airbnb Success. My name is Trang Nguyen and we are going to talk about more to today. Uh, first off, I would like to congratulate everyone who have um, done their listings and put it live and finish off the listings has been we have been going through from model ones. Uh, congratulations again for who ever haven't done it yet then you can start today or if you just want to take a quick look into model two what you're talking about then that's absolutely five um so in model twos um we already have start our listings right so we're going to talk about how to attract the good guests and how to um have the guests making inquiries to our listings right and just wait and give it your chance we're going to actively do a certain things a certain task that fulfill the listings and push it up boot it up in airbnb list and also stand out from the crowd so the guests can look in into our listing and start making a contact, the first contact with us, and then eventually they will book it. Okay. Um, in order to do that, so this module we will look on the overall of um, how to uh, strategically starting your guest inquiry booking, and then how to reply to your guests without killing your old time. And that we can use a copies and paste trick. I will show you a bit in detail later. And then we go into um, define what is a good good guess and then the bad guess. And then you can choose which is a guess that actually more suitable for your lifestyle in order to accept them. And then I will show you inside my listing from when the guest first met inquiry until how I lead them into um, um, booking the place, actually answer all the question, booking to booking the place, and then how I'm gonna instruct them from uh, the moment they book the place, maybe um, a day before or in the same day, because I'm, I open instant book, or if just book three months ago, how can I um, keep the conversation flow? and until the moment the guests arrive so it's become a very professional service for the stack of the booking uh, this is the crucial part the crucial is the starting when you start the first four to five guests you got to give them the most attention ever see that they are the first golden act that you get so um you got to treat them like kings and queen and prepare your place uh, fabulous for them on their arrival so you can expect to get a good review because otherwise if they give you a bad review the first two to three guests and you receive the bad review oh dear that's not gonna turn out very good because you will the likely chance is you will receive no more guests after that people don't don't really like it if you know even the picture is fabulous but then when they check out your place and they read through the review and you only have two or three review and it all turned out very very bad then people are likely to avoid your place doesn't matter how fabulous it look and how cheap it is therefore make sure the first guest had the best experience experience because yeah, it will get a lot easier um if the first review are good and then eventually you will build up more and more reviews by the time you get more than 10 reviews you will have a lot and lot constantly request constantly inquiry um every day for your booking and then eventually you will be able to fill the whole month the, the whole two months of booking when the first make when guests first make inquiry they will ask a question before they request or they before they instant book your place um sometimes with the people who are with the guests who are actually very easy going um 
they don't bother. They just read your listing description, pictures, and read through the review. All good, and they would they will immediately make the instant book. But um, the chance of fifty percent of the guests. Now at the beginning, maybe you get sixty to seventy percent of the guests who will um, ask you a lot of questions, and those questions they tend to be repeat over and over again, um, such as. Um, you know, how much the room costs? Um, is there any extra charge? Is there any parking? Um, so you will receive like all the, all the questions over and over again. Then there are two types of preservation. They the guests, they will uh, ask before the book. And um, after you satisfy them with all the answers, they will ready to book you up. Uh, we book your place and then they're the other type of guests who we just go in and book without asking any questions. With the guests who haven't booked and just make an inquiry, you will have 24 hours to reply to their request. Uh, if anything more than 24 hours, that will be a disaster because your booking will be pushed down to the bottom. Um, I highly recommend to reply to guests as soon as possible as soon as you receive their uh, inquiries. Uh, within an hour of the inquiry, that would be good. Anything longer than that, two to three hours, the chance is that they is not very good for your listings. Mm. When you check the guests, uh, you got to look at their review, their verification, etc. Sometimes if guests make a booking, an, an inquiry, the booking, but they haven't verified themselves, um, they they have book, they have paid through Airbnb, but because if they haven't verified themselves, then you have to make them aware that they got to verify themselves on Airbnb in order for the booking to go through. Um, at first, when you start, the um, Airbnb will just hold the instant book in order for you to accept it, right? Um, and then after that, after two to three months, it just become or when they do an instant book, it will um, activate automatically so you don't have to click accept anymore. I think at the beginning you might have to um, go through the accept and uh, decline period. So Airbnb know that um, it's created a pattern in Airbnb and they know that what uh, your habit likely to be of either you just, you know, uh, refuse gets instant book or you just constantly accept and accept then in the future they will just leave it as an automatic accept for the instant book okay um so that is the start and remember uh, it will get easier eventually after um you serve about 10 guests then you will by that time you will know like what you need to clean what you need to um, reply to the guests and what exactly um, the guests tend to expect it and what um, you need to do while get staying there uh, and after get staying there okay so um yes it will be a bit of a uh, nervous breaking at the first a few guests but then it becomes easier just things that um is it just a old friend of you come to visit you know you could treat them like um because you haven't met for ages you could treat them very very good um do the, the same for the first few guests um in one of my place um the, when i first start i even take the uh, guests out a uh, for a day out um, because actually um, it's a weekend and the guest checking in, um, the guest from Korea, I think, um, and he checking in in the morning and when he arrived, it's like, I don't know what to do and what, where to go. I haven't actually looked it up yet. And I actually go out to um, Greenwich, day out Greenwich with my friend. So, you know, I actually drive him all the way there and then drive him all the way back which he very appreciated. And after that, I actually have a lot, a lot of Korean people book my flights because of his um, reveal. So, um, yes, and the first few guests are very important if they actually give you, leave you a good and long reveal.
Yes, when guests ask you a question, you got to reply to them um, as soon as possible. Within an hour is um, the best. Uh, two hours is all right. Uh, anything after longer than that is uh, not very good. Um, and some inquiry and some booking that people already make payment and just wait for your approval. If you haven't done it within 24 hours, then our Airbnb will automatically cancel it, uh, which is not very good for your business and for the staff, you know. Uh, so don't um, neglect it. Um, focus most of your time at the beginning and then it will become easier and easier down the road and then we will also looking at systemize it once everything already get to uh, stage where you're familiar with everything um, from cleaning to the guest check-in until guest check-out and maintenance everything you will receive a lot of um, question over and over again and to to avoid uh, spending a lot of time we're looking at a copy and paste trick that will save you tons of time um, so the guests will ask you the same questions over time so if you start compose the list um, the, those questions and when you answer the guests you copy that and paste it in a, a word documents you know or in a spreadsheet then um, after the five or ten guests, you will be able to compose the whole list of, you know, five to ten questions that have been asked. When when someone asks that question again, just copy and paste it. Yes, yeah, so make a pre-written response and then paste them in the message and in the email. I don't tend to do email. I tend to advise all the guests to keep everything within Airbnb because I do have the... Um, my Airbnb manager look use uh, the login and managing my account. So if you look into doing that, then create a habit of um, making your guests to um, reply to you, message you on Airbnb, and discourage them to use WhatsApp, Viber, email, anything else of Airbnb because it's it will. I mean, for for the staff, the conversation will not flow if you have them ask the first question in the in Airbnb when they request and then after the book they start emailing you, they got your email, they're emailing you and ask several questions or tell you that they will arrive this time and that time. And then by the time they arrive, they will just um, watch at you when they arrive at the station. It's just the, the conversation doesn't um, go flow in Airbnb and if you actually have a um, guest that complain later uh, such as for example that they told you that they, they email you that they arrived at some time and then you wasn't there uh, upon their arrival and then start complaining then those missing messages that wasn't been sent on Airbnb um, account it's very difficult for you to answer and reply to them um, and get Airbnb to resolve it for you on the resolution center. You know, if you have everything listed out and all the question answers, all the responding to guests in Airbnb, um, any problem later on that get to Airbnb and then you need them to resolve it to you, they will just look into, into the conversation and they will see everything there which will be easier for both parties, especially for you, if there's something you need to resolve. So compile the list of all the response to every possible question that you can think of or every guest has asked you, and this will lower the burnout and save you a lot of time. Okay. Um, probably before uh, guests arrive, I do have a list of questions that I have already compiled and um, so if any of them asking me I will just uh, copy and paste it easily um, the question such as like what time uh, I arrive what time I, uh, for the check-in what time for the check-out uh, uh, is your apartment or your place available for our travel days and if there any have been um, 
anyone booking it because we are looking into this and that place uh, so that do you have any other other place or the room available um, uh, question like um, okay I'm looking at booking your place for how week is that and it is count um, uh, and they guess who just asking random question um, do uh, answer it and then copy the answer uh, and then paste it in your list so later on if any other guests asking the question you'll be able to copy and paste that again but um, yeah those um, those basic information such as you know check in time check out time your address and how far is it your place from uh, uh, the close closest station or uh, what is the closest attraction that they can walk to um, you know what is the Wi-Fi code all of those details are important for the guests when they book um, when they make inquiry let's looking into um, what type of guests uh, that would uh, possibly suited your place in order for you to uh, decide which one is um, you will happy for them to stay in there. These are the, all the types of the guests that I'm got, uh, I have experienced through all of my Airbnbs and I will list them out so you can see that what is the guest personalities and then you can understand the difference between two of them. Thing is, I'm not trying to uh, put people in a box here, and um, I realize that the people are dynamic, but it's a common marketing practice to create personal for your customer, so you can find the right fit out there in the market uh, for you. Um, at first, this might seem like a list of uh, each personal flaws, <laughs> but the purpose of, of this um, is to make the unexpected guess and give you the tools you need to turn potential negative experience on Airbnb into a positive one so that you have a sustainable system in place for hostings. Yeah. And in order to make Airbnb a realistic option for you, you have to get real and understand that people are unique and wonderful, but they could also be incredibly difficult each coming with their own unique expectations or uh, uh, why they're staying there and uh, and expectation of you as a host uh, so most likely you will find more than one fit for your place and as a either a couple or a single person both are good to know okay um but how do you identify the personality of a potential guest. You can cover that in the initial inquiry message when you ask what will you be doing while you're here? Or what is the purpose of your trip? Sometimes when guests make inquiry they will automatically ask you about that like okay I'll visit first I might visit London so basically they are tourists or uh, I've come to London for an interview and looking for a place to stay, you know, so they are actually business type people. Okay, so the first one we're looking into is the under 25, those party festival goers, um, the people who go, who go into for late night activity or music festival, and they take looks for the place to lay their head at night. They likely to sleep late in the morning and make use of any share amenities uh, or the off hour, like showering and preparing for the start of the day in the afternoon. Um, they possibly, possibly still you to um, uh, the dorm life, share apartment living. Um, therefore, they might be messy and you think uh, you might think have an issue with noise. Uh, they're also not yet fully responsible for bill and expect excessive use of utility. The second type of guest that you will uh, see more often is student type. 
these are the type of people who are mostly all the activities are on the list during their studies. You most likely to include drinking and they are not yet fully responsible for bills and expected excessive use of utility yet. So they may have long shower and light night um, and light left on and they will probably sleep in and get a uh, starch light. They often want to find accommodation for themselves and for one or more of their student friends as well. Or uh, you might also have the extreme student type which sometimes confuse <laughs> the Airbnb housing option will stay with a horse family. <laughs> a very uh, large number of students might find um, a trans student my fi um may want you to stay with you for a long term and they will ask for it you know um i mean typically not um that independent and will need some hand holding as well so they may not understand the culture and the social norm of um the country and make sure you cover the house road thoroughly during your work through maybe you can repeat it over and over again for them they will spend a little a little bit more time in their room and having uh, generally one or two activities that they would like to do in the city per day. Um, also, to expect late departure and early return from them. Um, they will wonder about the ability to cook a warm up food in your home, and they will need a lot of um, things um, that they can buy on a budget. Then you have the type of uh, weekender. There is um, other type of people who want to soak up as much of the city as they can in two to three days. So they might look uh, to you for recommendations and the chance of direct them to the um, or the attraction place in the city. A common goal guess that most likely won't require much effort for you. Um, like they wake up very early in the morning, um, you shower and leave, and they will come back very late in the uh, evening. Because most of the day we're just spending outside and and enjoy the city as much as they can. Um, if you see the type of young couple, um, they more powerful and confident together. Um, the young couple will have more of the present in your home than the solo gets good, you know. They will <laughs> create more noise in home than single guests as well. And one of the two is likely to go over um, your welcome box or house all rows truly if you provide to them. They will also often um, monitor each other guest behavior if they stay uh, long term um, long term I mean more than two to three days um, which might save you the stretch of having to give a feedback on something that violates the hands rule um, they will have things that they want to do and starting the day somewhat early filling their schedule with lots of activity the next type that you will get is the independent type of paid guests. They are an experienced traveler who know how to navigate the new city and has no fear of getting out and about on their own without your guidance, you know. So they are very easy to deal with. Um, they will need a little from you other than the key to their room and the internet code, does it? And I might have some question about your favorite places in the city. If you seem like a person who would know about a cool spot, anticipate this by including recommendation in your welcome book. All right. You may have also encountered the worker type who go in town for business, uh, conference, exhibitions, training, sales trips, etc. Um, you will need, um, they will need access to the bathroom or kitchen early in the morning to prepare for food. Because it's important to, um, for the shared bathroom so you can notify them in advance, you know. 
um, and you won't see much of them during the standard work hours, but they might be a um, bit after a long day and return to the house early for rest. So moths won't explore the city much, but they probably look for recommendations in your neighborhood. Uh, and they have a high probability of needing, wanting access to kitchen and amenities since they are not in town for pleasure. All right. Um, another type uh, you might meet as well is the cultural maven. Um, they are the type that go into your city because um, it's a their destination and they want to soak up every cultural offering is has, uh, such as um, museum, um, architectures, plays, theatres, live music, um, etc. So keep this in mind when you put your recommendation together because they probably spend the majority of the day out and they might return in late afternoon, early evening to rest before going out to explore again at night. And it's also possible that they will only return to the house to sleep. Okay. Um, another type is the mom and dad type. There is, um, this, if this individual or couple is significantly older than you, they might try to take on a parental role in your home, especially if your living quarters are near theirs. So they will most likely ask for access to the kitchens and will wake up early. And it's possible they don't have a smartphone or they aren't used to using Google Maps, you know. So do um, keep this in mind if you encounter these type of people. You may, uh, they may want help with direction and some recommendation. But otherwise, they're quite independent. Um, they will have things that they want to do and starting off someday a bit early and filling the schedule with activity and might come back a bit early as well because they want to um, have a long uh, night rest. Okay. Um, the next type you might encounter is the thrifter type um, and they might try to hack on pricing with you at the beginning. Um, even if they pay very little for their room compared to other accommodation options, they will tend to be the pickiest of the guests. So prepare for them to expect more value than what they are paying for. Uh, so keep this in mind, if you don't want to deal with this type of guest, you can um, recognize it at the first conversation and then refuse them easily. Um, they will tend to uh, look to you for affordable restaurants and recommendation, um, okay? Uh, if you do accept them to come and stay at your place. Um, not a time with a newbie. They never use Airbnb before and they will look to you for guidance into how it works, how to pay, uh, everything, every single thing they will uh, expect it, you to answer them. And they may have a hard time understand what they do or don't have access into your home as well. So please make it clear upfront. Um, they might include a lot of irrelevant details in their correspondence because they think they are supposed to share the exact plan with you. And it doesn't mean that they are high, overly communicative person, all right? They just uh, uh, they just knew it to the, the, the side and they haven't used this service before. So they just giving you more than what you expected to receive in the detail in their plan. But they're not really, maybe they turn out that they're not really the people that want to talk to you when they arrive or at all. Um, they tend to be more picky when it's come time to write their spy with you because they view the first review as highly important. And it's helpful to set aside some time to visit with them and explain the whole Airbnb culture. Um, because every house is different, and plus the value of the money they get when they choose not to stay in the hotel, right? Notice, you will be training the newbie and setting the expectation for future stay with other house. So make sure you don't send the next house a nightmare, okay? <laughs> Because we, we are in um sharing economy here, so it will be... um. 
a positive point of view, you'll be able to share as much as you can and be um, hospitality, um, be nice as much as you can. Okay. The next two type guests, uh, you might guess is the new roommate um, and the fancy. Um, for the new roommates, the long, they are um, long term guests and usually stay in two weeks or more. And of course, your yeah, price have to reflect their pocket as well. Um, they will have more question than short-term guests because they want to find a good living situation and they will expect space in the refrigerator. <laughs> Remember that. So I'll respond best to the medium church house and requires some crossing of the house guest barriers due to the length of their stays. Um, they will have more time to get to know you and therefore be more likely to leave you good review and especially if the room is up to their expectation. Okay. The last type we have is the fancies um, type guests. They typically book higher price uh, room and properties and they will have higher expectation for cleanliness, design and service and expect privacy a lot and they likely to spend more time on the property because they pay a higher price. <laughs> so it will be depend on what kind of your listing, what kind of space you have. Uh, so you will receive different type of guests that uh, um, have interest in your place and then you may have like a mix of number of them interest in your place but then you can uh, when you understand the different types of guests, you know which one that you can you know, start to have more questions when they first initially um, um, request in your place and with time that you just you know, say think that oh it's all right they are the type that I, I wanted like the worker or the independent host um, or the weekender who tend to wake up early and coming back late at the time that you wanted. Uh, just stay in your place, then you can avoid the student type, uh, the mom and dad type, the trip to time, the newbie type, you know. Yeah, um, so to keep an eye for um, those conversations when it uh, arises. Okay, next one we'll look inside our BNB and uh, I will show you all the, um, the communications from when the guests start making their first inquiry and then how I reply to them and then how they um, actually book and come to stay at my place.